Hello, this is Fede Garmans from Software for Chemistry and Materials. In this video, we will look at a very simple transition state of a molecule on a surface, hydrogen adsorption onto graphene. Hopefully, these tips can help you for finding your own transition states for these surface reactions, for instance, if you're interested in heterogeneous catalysis. Let's first build the 3D system, the bulk system. In our case, that's graphite. Then slice the surface. And now we have our 001 surface in which there's two layers. So let's remove the bottom layer to have just one layer of graphene. There we go. To go to slightly lower coverages, we generate a 2x2 two two supercell. So some, we have something like a quarter monolayer coverage if we insert hydrogen. So there's a hydrogen molecule, and we want to orient that a little bit more uh, neatly with respect to the graphene layer. So we use the new tune geometry option in AMS 2020. Those are the atoms I want to move, and I want to orient them with respect to these two atoms. So first make sure that parallel, and then move them to the geometric center of that those two atoms. Close the tune geometry panel, and now we want to do a quick sweep of the potential energy surface by using density functional base type binding for organic systems and even for organometallic systems. That could be quite a good choice if you're looking at metal surfaces. The available uh, type binding parameters that we have are usually not sufficiently. Uh, describing the bulk systems where you have high coordination that well. So you probably need to reparameterize that or you can use a cheap density functional method uh, within bands to get a quicker overview uh, of your potential energy surface landscape and get closer to your envisioned transition state. And you can also use partial Hessians inside uh, the DFT code to get a better uh, starting guess of the curvature of the relevant uh, part of the uh, the, um, the potential energy surface in which you want to find the maximum energy that is the transition state. Okay, um, we want to do a PES scan and we want to decrease this distance here to something close to a typical carbon hydrogen bond and we want to do the same for the other hydrogen atom here. By default now we have two coordinates so we'll do a 10 by 10 grid uh, where it scans each one of these coordinates but we can also do it simultaneously if we make them part of the same scan coordinates. So now we have a composite coordinate where those distances are decreased simultaneously. So this is just what a crude idea of the potential energy surface landscape. I will reduce the default convergence criteria by a factor of five. And let's save this as PESCAN. And I will run this on our remote machine. So I'll select a remote queue and run it there. I will transfer the job to that machine. And once it's done, I can transfer the results back explicitly or uh, if I start to visualize some property, it will fetch the relevant file so I can do a local visualization of that. It should not take more than a, a few seconds now. So now it's finished. Uh, this input window will shortly prompt me, oh, do you want to actually see it's getting the file information? Do you want to read the new coordinates? Let's do that. So now we have the last point and it will have remembered the last bond distances so I could actually guess bonds and now this is of course somewhere close to our end state. We select movie here it will fetch also the result file from which it can read the potential energy surface scan details and if it's finished by default it will only show the converged points. If you're interested in all the points you could switch off accepted geometries only, uh, but in this case it helps to more easily get the highest energy point. 
Now let's select these coordinates here and use that as a starting point for our transition state search. Um, it's usually safer to start a completely new input so you don't have any constraints or other uh, things inadvertently still selected in the other input window. I'll paste this here and since it's a 2D periodic system it will switch to the nearest periodic code, in this case it's band. Of course I want to do the calculations with DFTB and with DFTB I want to use the same Hamiltonian, so the second order DFTB D3 back at Johnson using the 3OB31 parameter set. I want to calculate the frequencies for my transition state, so switch task to transition state and uh, for transition states it's very important to get a good idea of the curvature so we calculate the Hessian uh, to start with which is very cheap to do so for a typical DFTB job. Alright so let's save this as transition state search 1 so that's our first attempt at finding our transition state and let's put it on the remote queue again and run it um, if you want to do a transition state search with band or periodic uh, DFT code, which can also handle 2D periodic boundary conditions, an option could be to use calculate with fast engine, in which case it will calculate the Hessian using uh, the XDB Hamiltonian. So in the meantime, our job is finished, and we see here error transition state search failed, converged, but did not find a transition state. So have, let's have a look at the log file. And we can see um, that, that the geometry corresponds to a stationary point on a potential energy surface with more than one negative or actually um, uh, imaginary frequencies. So we can visualize those frequencies if we have the job selected. Here we go to spectra, which gives you the IR positions for periodic systems. We don't have intensities yet, but we do have the positions. And there you can see, indeed, there are two imaginary frequencies, negative eigenmodes. And if we visualize them, okay, this is clearly related to the insertion reaction. Um, but here, also with a with an imaginary uh, frequency, is a mode that actually breaks the synchronicity. So that means since it's a negative number, if we distort along that coordinate, we can go downhill from a second order set of point to a first order set of point. And usually what is quite easy to do is just distort the system manually. So in this case, we need to break the symmetry. We want to push this hydrogen atom up a little bit higher. And since the slider always uh, selects the last atom to move it. Probably we want to select the hydrogen atom a second, so we keep the graphene layer as is. So now we've broken this symmetry here, so this synchronous, synchronous transition state um, is a second, sorry, it's not a transition state, it's a second order setup point. And let's see if this works. Make sure we calculate the frequencies, and again, as a starting point, we calculate the initial Hessian. Okay, um, let's save this as transition state search 2. Let's see if we're more successful this time around. Put it onto IV, our 16 core nodes, and run it there. Okay, let's see what's what's happening here. It's computing the initial Hessian. And if we have a look at the log file. Actually, it's already finished. Here we say, okay, transition state search successful. So we have one imaginary mode. Let's double check that indeed this is a first order settle point. Let's close down this one here. We go to spectra. And uh, 
Okay, so this does look like a transition state for inserting hydrogen into graphene. Looks a little bit more different from the one we had before. Let's see if we can use this as a starting point for finding our transition state with DFT. So what we do is probably wise to make a new input. and just copy these coordinates into this new input window here and as we've seen before this will switch to band and with band we want to do a transition state search and we also want to calculate not all the frequencies but we just want a characterization of the pass point which will be a much quicker way to assess whether or not we have one and one negative mode only. Now we can use um, for our transition state initial Hessian the one that we just calculated. So rather than using auto we'll, we will use from file and then we will choose the Hessian which was calculated with TS search 2. So we select dftb rkf which holds, holds this Hessian um, and let's choose was it dispersion corrected functional pbd3 and the double zeta with polarization uh, basis set and keep all the other things as default okay now let's call this transition state search band and if we save this file, it will have this dependency here. So it uses the Hessian um, as we indicated. So this file is a dependency. And if we now transfer that to, let's use a different cluster in this case, to our remote cluster, it will also copy this file. So you don't need to worry about whether or not that is in the right position. Um, and <clears throat> then I will use that as a starting point for its transition state search. So this calculation is going to take a little while, so let's come back in a couple of minutes. Great, so our job is finished. Um, it's taken around 23 minutes. And as we can see from the result, the transition state is a little bit more symmetric, a little bit more synchronous in terms of insertion of the hydrogen atoms at the DFT level than it was at the tight binding level, but if we measure these distances, 1.37 angstrom and 1.5 angstrom, we see that it's still definitely an asynchronous transition state. It has also done a pest point characterization, and we can see that at the end of the log file here. Um, so what it does is it uses a lower level Hessian, in this case DFTB, and then iteratively through frequency calculations tries to update the lowest mode. So that works well if your lower level method uh, is in pretty decent agreement with your higher level method. And it's much cheaper than actually calculating the full Hessian. However, if you want to calculate the free energy of activation, you probably want to include uh, some zero point energy and other thermodynamic corrections. So then in that case you'd need to switch to single point and from properties frequencies change characterize best point into frequencies. You could rescan the modes um, to make sure that you don't have any spurious low level frequency modes uh, but usually uh, that is only the case for systems where you have very floppy modes. So in this case, it's not necessary. These are numerical frequencies and they're very well parallelized. Uh, so we have in this case, let's count, we have 10 atoms. So we'll have for each one of them three displacements uh, and we'll do a double we do a, a double displacement on both ends, so we'll have 60 di displacements. In that case, we could easily run, for instance, on um, 60 cores or something like that. The 
M's driver figures out what is the most efficient way to parallelize all those finite differences uh, to make optimal use of all the CPU cores that you have available. So that parallelizes relatively well. Okay, so that concludes our little demonstration of how you could go about and find a transition state for a molecule on the surface. So if you can find a lower level method that gives you a pretty uh, decent description of the reaction you're looking at, for instance, tight binding or MOPAC, then you could go with that in terms of exploring the surface, finding the geometry closest to your transition state. Um, but you could also uh, use another feature uh, that's available also from the M's driver, which is calculating a frequency or actually a Hessian only for part of your system. So we could select just these four atoms here and create a new region for that. And then it would just distort these four atoms in this case. So four times three times two displacements rather than 10 times three times two displacements. Uh, and then you could use that partial Hessian as a good starting point. Um, so we'd save that Hessian and then in the, um, in the details uh, geometry section, we could use that particular file as a restart option. In this case, it's not available because we still selected a single point. So that would be another option in case you don't have uh, a lower level method, which is decent enough to, to provide you with a good starting uh, guess for your Hessian. Uh, then it would use those modes uh, and fill in all the other uh, parts of the Hessian uh, with unit matrix. Do let us know if you have any questions or problems uh, or further suggestions that would help you uh, to find your own transition states for molecules on the surface. Until then, be safe and well.